So number one is being adept at asking open questions. So right. that's a really critical first step. The second one I find now is using a visual Hey, I've got Dean Kelly with me again. Welcome back, Dean. Thank you for having me again, John. Hey, Dean, last time we had a great discussion about change the conversation mm -hmm. in a sales environment. Uh, and I love that. Thank you very much. And we at the end of it, we said, well, okay, we really need to talk about how you change a conversation. Could you talk a little bit about some of the things you recommend and that salespeople need to do to change the conversation? Absolutely. There's a, there's a couple of key ingredients that I find are, are critical in, in doing this. Number one... It's being able to ask good open questions. And one of the biggest challenges for salespeople is under pressure, we, we, we ask closed questions which generally stunt the conversation or we get so caught up in our inner monologue trying to think of, wow, that was a really good first question I asked John, how am I going to follow that up with another good one that, that we get caught up in that and we now lose that authentic moment that we're sharing with the client. So A lot of people would say that you should script out all the questions and be ready to go from one to the next. I don't know what your experience is with having done that, but I've found that, you know, on the maturity model as a salesperson, we go through that phase where we try to script them out. I'm glad you I said that. I totally agree. The challenge is, more often than not, the situation doesn't come up for that question in the format that you wrote it. So my view now is to be more situationally agile and create a conversation where you have more time. So number one is being adept at asking open questions. So right. that's a really critical first step. The second one I find now is using a visual type of representation uh, to kick the, pro, the, the conversation off. And you're so, not talking a brochure or something? No, I'm not talking <laughs> a brochure. So the way I, I look at two key ones. One I call just the megatrends slide, if you will. It's just a picture and it has a number of issues that are affecting the client or clients like them in the current world. So their industry may, or whatever. Yeah, high level ones that are affecting their industry. Example, it may be cloud, it may be a shift in consumer to towards mobile and that has a fundamental change in their behavior. If they're moving to mobile, obviously security comes in. We're having a lot of in the news about security breaches and data being lost, so obviously security is there as well. It may be if you're in the, the, the visual environment it may be to do with the moving to 4k is from a media perspective and that's fundamentally changing um, the quality of stuff you publish so those things may be there in a picture okay so it's open-ended questions mm -hmm. that are, are based around the mega trends which i assume you are going to be aligned to whatever research you've done on the customer so you know they're probably going to have opinions and issues in the areas of the mega trends correct and then it's about getting the conversation going where you serve to get the conversation started, which may be introducing them. Hey, John, these mega trends of what our customers are telling us are either the greatest challenge or the greatest opportunity their company is trying to take advantage of. As you look at this list, which would be the number one for you, either as a challenge or that opportunity? And why? Exactly. And so you're going to get going, and then I'm able to respond then with open questions, and instead of thinking of the long question that I've got to ask, it's actually breaking them down to far shorter, more open questions, so I can keep the conversation. Or if you thought of this as a uh, badminton game, for example, keep the rally going in a natural way where I can authentically be present with the client, we're focusing on them, we're focusing on their business, and we're, during that process, uncovering areas that may be opportunities for us to create value for their client. And, and one of the issues I, I find a lot of people, a lot of salespeople, they, they, they want to move it quickly, and, and it's much better to actually slow it down, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I, I've been doing a little bit of research on this for myself. If I have a meeting that goes for less than an hour, where I'm in a hurry to get out, maybe my car's parked in a 60-minute block, what I find is that meeting doesn't actually go as well as being in the moment with the client and allowing the conversation to flow. And even if it goes over time, or even if the client says, hey, look, I can't continue this, but I definitely want you back, that in itself is a great advance into the next meeting. So setting it up and authentically being there and having this conversation is in the customer's best interest too. And generally they reward you by wanting you to come back or extending the time that you have and that just leads to a better qualified opportunity. You used a word that I love there, and that's being authentic. 
Uh, and one of the issues I find with a lot of salespeople is they try to be somebody that they're not and they, and they don't sit back and relax and be themselves. They have enormous unique value. Every person does. If I can authentically bring that to the table and then in a relaxed way have a conversation and, and use my domain knowledge to change the conversation with the questions I ask, then it's going to be very valuable for the customer. Absolutely. And that's put page to having the prepared questions because prepared questions un completely undermine that authenticity of being in the moment and going where the flow goes. And the visual one allows you to actually ask questions rather than dynamically trying to keep four or five balls in the air simultaneously using only words. Okay. It makes it too hard. All right. So bottom line is the how is open-ended questions and using mega trends type visuals that can then help generate that discussion and Absolutely. that conversation uh, and then authentically and, and in, a, in a relaxed way having a good solid conversation and bringing your value to the table your commercial insight through the questions you ask not telling them as much as you can as much as you can hey Absolutely. dean that was a great conversation I look forward to the next one. Let's, uh, let's continue this. I'd like to really explore this really uh, a lot more. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you, John. Thanks, Dean.